CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. For those joining us, this is the Tuesday, April 9th, 2024 meeting of the Arlington Artificial Turf Study Committee. Potentially, hopefully, our last mm -hmm. meeting, but we shall see. Um, this is our 15th meeting for those keeping score. And as I said to the select board a few weeks ago when I predicted we were probably going to come up around 15 meetings when all was said and done, I said, you know, for those who say we, we should have started earlier, we could have started a year ago and probably met not as much as 15 times. So um, we met an awful lot in a very short time. And kudos to all of you for basically going along with a very aggressive meeting schedule. Um, so... Uh, let's get the preliminaries out of the way quickly. I think we have minutes to um, approve. And I don't have any comments on the minutes from last week. They were great. I think they were a good summation of both the public meeting portion and the, um, the public comment portion and the committee portion. But if anyone has anything they want to bring to our attention, please do so now. Okay, well, I'll entertain a motion if that's the case. Move to accept the minutes of March 27th. Second. Please call the roll. Are they March 27th or April 2nd? Uh, April 27th. Okay. okay. No. April 2nd. Oops. April 2nd. Yeah. Uh, second, April 2nd. April 2nd? I'm looking at the wrong. Am I looking at the wrong? Oh, I guess they're in our agenda incorrectly, but that's okay. Oh, shoot. Really? That's all right. All right. Okay. As long as we vote on the correct one, it's okay. the meeting of April 2nd. It just says on our agenda that they're the meeting minutes of March 27th. I was getting lazy on you. Thank you for catching that. Sorry. No, I didn't <laughs> catch it in time. All right. So we'll go through. Uh, Leslie? Yes to approving April 2nd agenda Great. of April 2nd minutes. Jim? Yes. Mike? Yes. Um, Joe Barr, not here just yet. Natasha is a yes. Jill? Yes. Marvin? Yes. Okay. So that is approved six uh, to zero with um, Joe just not present yet. So. Uh, and then I guess the summation of correspondence received. Yes, that will be me. Um, give me one second here. Okay, so we had a few, um, I had two emails from Robin Ber Bergman, um, and they were emails with links to presentations about um, PIP, that's poured in place um, surfaces. Uh, this was, uh, I believe, a presentation from um, the CDC, Diana Zuckerman, um, who talks about childhood lead poisoning. Um, and its relationship to the port in place playground surfaces. Uh, so those were the two emails that were sent, sorry, um, from Robin. And then we had uh, two emails from Beth Malofchik. One was an email forwarding on an email from um, the Collaborative for Health and Environment in regards to uh, science and the plastic plastics uh, treaty uh, health costs of chemicals in plastics and EDC during pregnancy. Um, the second email was a link to view uh, to, a, I guess it's it's an article, um, a view of a young athlete who played on artificial turf for 15 years. Uh, and then there was a video from Dr. Philip Landring discussing health risks associated with artificial turf. And then there were uh, four sources at the bottom there. Um, Philadelphia Inquirer, Risky Play, uh, Artificial Turf has parents and coaches of cancer-stricken athletes concerned. Second one was from Dr. Um, Larrigan discussing artificial turf on school grounds. The third was from um, Healthy Schools Pennsylvania, Safer Sports Fields, a win for healthy schools. Um, and then the fourth one was a video on PFAS and artificial turf uh, presented, I believe, by Kayla Bennett. And that's all I've got. Um, thank you, Natasha. I would like to say, and maybe this doesn't matter much because this may be our last meeting, um, but 
uh, I did notice one of the submissions uh, sort of called out some particular individuals on this committee or some people on some other town committees. And I just think that's not, that's not really appropriate. Um, you know, if you have a point to make, make the point, don't necessarily personalize it. So that's all I'd say on that. Um, unless anyone has anything else to add. Um, okay, the main event. Um, so you have the latest draft, which, uh, you know, you we gave it in clean form and also a form that I think could show you what we, what Natasha and I tried to do in order to be responsive to uh, the comments we received the last two meetings. Um, you know, I'm happy to talk about anything tonight related to the report, but I would prefer to focus on things that are red line because I just think it's very late in the game to bring up bring up things that you haven't brought up before. Um, you certainly have a right to, but we've had several meetings where and people have had opportunities to bring things up. So I'd rather kind of focus on the things we know need to be edited as opposed to new things that are being put on the table for the first time. I'm hopeful that won't happen, but, um, and I don't know what the best way to do this is if it's just to like scroll through the report mm -hmm. and people can say stop when they want to. Before we get to that though, I, there is a simple reality here, which is even after this meeting between now and you know our target is Friday to submit, uh, you know, provided we actually vote on this tonight, the target would be to submit this on Friday to the select board and the town moderator. Uh, to distribute to town meeting members. I mean, they're probably going to need still be edits that Natasha and I do. Um, I can give you my word, we will not make any substantive edits after tonight, um, but I hope we have the consent of the committee to make, you know, ministerial edits, I would say, you know, spacing, sometimes word choice just, you know, can be clear, you know, things that just clean things up. Um, I, you know, I give you my word, we won't make any substantive changes. And if we do, I'll, I'll bring, I'll reconvene the committee if we have to, but, um, there may, you know, I, I have a list of about having read through the report again over the weekend, I have a list of maybe two to three dozen things that need to be corrected. And many of them are like truly corrections, like the spacing's wrong, or there's a typo or, you know, paragraphs are kind of jumbled together and need to be separated by a, you know, a, you know, a return key um you know or just sometimes a word that just seemed out of place or maybe there was some other word that more appropriately should have been put there but it's not a substantive change um so i mean i could go through all you know two or three dozen of these things tonight i'm hoping yeah. i just have the committee's sort of <laughs> consent to make this thing look nice and shiny um and correct typos I do have one or two substantive things and I'll wait to bring them up on, you know, on my own at some point in this meeting. But, um, you know, I just didn't want anyone sort of being alarmed if, if Natasha and I make some further edits after this meeting, but just know that our, we will not make a single substantive edit after this meeting. You could just put it in chat GPT. <laughs> There's that too. Uh, motion to allow you to make edits that do not change the content of the report. Between second. now and Friday, okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, uh, so we'll go right down the list. Um, Mike? Yes. Uh, Jill? Yes. Uh, Leslie? Yes. Uh, Marvin? Yep. Natasha? Yes. Jim? Yes. Although maybe I'm maybe I'm conflicted out of this. One. Right. <laughs> I'll say yes. Joe Barr is uh, not here yet, so uh, that's six to zero with um, Joe not present. So. Well, thank you. So I really want to focus on what all of you have to say tonight, then, because I'll tell you after going through the report, I only had other than one or two things, smallish sort of formatting type things. So. If there is something substantive tonight's the night to talk about it. So I can do yeah. one of two things. I have a cleaner version, um, which was sent out to in the packet. That's the one that is not redlined. And then um, there's a red, li red, li 
red lined version. I'm happy if you think it would be helpful to pull that up or not pull that up. Totally up to the group. Um, I just I want to that. The red lined version is more helpful so we know the intent of the change. Okay. Would everyone like me to pull that up as we go through or sure. you want to just talk about certain sections? Let's go page by page. I don't think it'll take that long. <laughs> Famous <laughs> last words. <laughs> I know it's 25 pages now, Mike, but yeah. Actually, it's like that's 38, Jim. I added the references. Okay. Um, hang on just one second. I'm going to share my screen. While she's doing that, I wanted to pose a question to the group. Um, what's your view of, um, I think I know where you are on this, but I did want to just put it out there. So in the footnotes, we have we often include links, um, you know, as citations, we just include the link. Does this committee believe that those links in the footnotes, I'm just talking about the footnotes, should be hyperlinked so people could just literally as they're reading the report, click on it? Or would you prefer that they be non-hyperlinked and if people want to follow them, they can copy and paste them on their own? I, I'll do whatever the committee wants. Right now, some of them are hyperlinked, some of them aren't. We have to make them consistent. I just didn't know if people had a preference. I want people to look at what we looked at, so I prefer them hyperlinked. Yeah, I think that's easier. Yeah. Okay. Well, to the extent we can, we'll hyperlink everything in the footnotes then. In the, the, only pro the only problem with that is I found sometimes the hyperlinks don't lead directly to what you are, what the reference is. It leads to the document, but not specifically into the actual section of the document. You know, for an example, for example, when um, footnote 23, I'll get it, was the one I had a question on because it just went into the document. It didn't go into where, um, I mean, we talked about this before and I was going to raise it. I mean, we can wait until we get to page seven, but the on the heat impact second paragraph, the temperature uh, routinely recorded, footnote 23 references the document. But when you go into the document, you have to actually go through the document. It didn't go right to, to the page. page. And you it can doesn't... always search on the document. What's that? You can always search in the document for the te for the text you're looking for. Well, it did. The, the document didn't have the text. Well, then there's something wrong there. Okay. All right. Let yeah, I think that's a different that. problem, Leslie. I think that's just a, maybe not a great site that we need did to. Did you say twenty three? I checked that one. Yeah. I mean, and maybe it's just a case of, uh, you know, um, software versions of, of what I'm using versus what others have used, though I would hope not. So I had to add, um, it might be off. I had to add, um, Leslie, I just, can you see my screen when I'm looking at the footnote here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So footnote 23 that yes. you just referenced, it might actually be footnote 24 now because I had to add one in. Um, so I'm gonna click on 24. Oops, okay. shit. All right. Ooh, don't swear. Uh, do you think it's this one? I think it is. Okay, let's see. Can you guys still see my screen as I'm going? See, it just goes right to the beginning. Right. To, yeah. I don't know how, how would I, how do you and link it? And again, if you do, I mean, you know, Mike suggested do a search for the text. The text says temperatures over 150 degrees have been routine, routinely recorded. If I went and looked for that specific phrase, I didn't see it. 120 degrees? 150. Temperatures over 150 degrees have been routinely recorded. Is I mean, there is, a, there is a page on, uh, on temperatures in this presentation, but that's... but. It's kind of all over the place. I wonder if that's um, not the right citation then. Um, I mean, that I, was the that was the only that was the one that I did try to get into and had a problem with. You know what? I wonder if that is. Um, and that was one of my substantive questions. Okay. I think I, I think we just have to check that one out. And, when and I went through them. We I don't remember a temperature one going to the that 
No, there wasn't one because oh. this was brought up at one of the last meetings. So we added in. So I'm wondering, um, let me get my screen back up. Sorry, guys. Because I know there was a question asked about that particular statement as to where, yeah. where have they been reported, routinely recorded. <clears throat> So I was trying to. Yeah, see. I think it's the wrong. Leslie, that's a really great point. I think it's the wrong reference because it's it's not in that Tory document. So uh, I'll have to go back and figure out what that reference is or if someone knows. Um, let me see here. Um, why am I having such a problem? OK, I'm trying to share my screen with you. I, I would just say that in general, that's kind of the standard for how um, references are, are are footnoted. I mean, I, I never see research papers where they pull out, you know, like a paragraph or something and identify that specifically. You just get the link to what the, the document is itself, and then you have to look for the specific information. I think that's right. Okay. So, but that specific information, it's not in, there. in that document. So we may just need to re rephrase, yeah, I'll re rephrase that. the the text. Yeah. So we'll just make a note. We'll make a note for note 23, I guess now 24. Yeah, over 24, yeah, okay. Um. So do you want to? Sorry, I jumped ahead. No, 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 that's good. No, we were talking footnotes and hyperlinks, so it actually was quite appropriate. Um, do you want to take it from the top? Yep, hang on. Just making my note on my other thing. Okay. I'm gonna scroll up. I'm gonna close your eyes. All right, here we are. So just in this uh, introduction, it's just a simple, does anyone have any comments they wanna make here? Nope. Okay. I'm gonna try and get as much in here as I can. So I'm assuming this is an accept. Um, everyone okay with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna accept that. Another change here from regularly to periodical. Right. I think we've discussed this one. We talked already. about that last time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to go through like this or not? I think yeah. you just put it on the screen if you don't hear anything. Okay. Assume that assume that it's accepted. I mean, this was a something to clarify. You know, this okay. is a series. This is like what I have in my list of like two or three dozen yeah. things, like things like this, just to make the sentence read better. So yeah, what I'll we, do is I'll just, I'll glance over it. And if someone has something that they want to talk about, just bring it up. Otherwise I'm going to, I'm going to do all the, in the interest of time, I'll do the accept changes after this. Yeah, Does that work? For I think that's a better. Yeah. better it's just, yeah. when you accept the changes, sometimes the red lining yeah. causes spacing and I'm, I'm, I'm relying on you and Jim to find that. Yeah, I know. So I, so I, I interestingly, when I read the report this week and I read the clean version, yeah, that had sort of essentially the accepted red lines, and yeah. that's where you notice there's a lot of things that don't quite work the way they were supposed to, right? Yeah, there are like this page, page one yeah. represent. You take out the ing and the yeah, yeah. and the and yeah. there needs to be a space. I mean, it's not big deal stuff. No, no. All right, so now we're down to scope of work. Any issues here? Okay, access uh, in this section. That second paragraph. Second pair. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was fine. This was like a rewording. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. I thought it just was right. a little clearer this way. So we good with this? Yeah. Okay. Still in the same section here. Linear sand injection system. Yep. This is, um, I mean, I'm fine with the wording there. Yep. Um, at the end, of that section there, it says so uh, maybe relatively inexpensive to install in ex on existing fields. Yep. Um, though recent experience at Robbins Farm Park suggests this approach is not always successful. Okay. And that is, and I verified that was that was a technique that we attempted at Robbins Farm Park, and it wasn't successful. Yeah, well, that's why it says maybe relatively inexpensive to install on. Well, I'm just pointing out 
<clears throat> it's a suggestion and and I, I want people to be aware mm -hmm. that we have tried that and it's not always a successful strategy because I know Marvin and I had a conversation right. at the at the last meeting where he looked at me and said try linear sand injection you know I really want the town to look at linear sand injection and I verified after that 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 is in fact the technique that right. was attempted at how Robin's if, Farm Park. So I just want to make a, you know, it, that I think it should be noted that we have tried that. How about if we have a possible mitigation strategy? Or is because it... it conceivably work well on other fields. The fact that it didn't work well on one field doesn't mean that it's going to, you know, not or, work. Or, well. or is it just adding the word may where the cursor that's, is right now? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, yeah, yes, my point may. was just, oh, yeah, okay. That but my help. point is, is our local experience. Yeah. And and it doesn't reflect that we have local experience with that. Right. The other point above that, where it says, as such, Arlington should consider increasing playing spaces. And it says some strategies for doing so include, these are not strategies to in ensure to increase playing spaces. They make them more accessible, perhaps, or more usable, but they are not increasing playing spaces. True. Yeah. That's true. So some strategies to make our current playing spaces more usable include? Well, I would get rid of increasing playing spaces because these are not strategies for doing that. I would just say should consider um, you know, uh, increasing the usability of spaces, and these are strategies for doing that. Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. That's a good catch, Mike. Yeah. So, uh, Arlington should consider increasing the usability or playability or something. Okay, we got to work on this. So, I'm going to highlight this. We'll figure it out. Just gonna highlight well, it's that a somewhere. substantive change, so I'd like to just figure it out now. Yep. Yeah. Right. All right. So I don't think yeah. we want to say that we shouldn't increase playing spaces. I think we should do that. And in the meantime, we should be working to make our current playing spaces more usable by yeah. Because if, if someone was to like donate their estate to the town and we could <laughs> be spending playing spaces, we would want to do that. Yeah. So I think we just add a sentence between bullet four or footnote four and some strategies that says, in addition, we need to make our current play, playing spaces more consistently usable in all weather or something like that. Right. In addition, Arlington should consider some strategies for increasing the usability or something like that of existing fields. Yeah, for yeah. But Can I just make a quick comment? Again, my point is that, and and th and this phrasing makes it sound like we haven't and we don't, and that is not the point I'm making with respect to the linear injection system. Yeah. Yeah. Leslie, if I could, I, I mean, consider? Oh, Joe. yeah, this, okay. you know, the one thing that they might be, and again, I was about to, I read through it and to be honest with you, I was like, oh, okay, it seems harmless enough. But now that we're kind of stuck on it and I'm thinking about it a little bit, why are we calling out one particular mitigate potential mitigation strategy based on one particular turf representative as you know as something we should potentially do i'm just wondering if you could be more vague and you know you, yeah we should in addition arlington should consider some strategies for increasing the usability of the existing existing fields period yeah you, you can don't take even, out the bullets yeah like 100 percent. i'm like i don't think they're really necessary i think we could investigate maybe there are 10 yeah. other um strategies that we just don't know of yet because we really didn't investigate it that might be perfect. And I, I just don't want to get caught up on sand in, injection system as being the, the kind of the cure-all. 
I, I think I think for me, what I what what appealed to me about the sand injection is he said it was ten or fifteen grand versus what, like a hundred grand or something for a pipe drainage system, or or more. So for me, this was something that the town might be able to afford, um, whereas some of the other strategies might not be fi financially viable. That's well, that's you know well, that, we was, that was we got to quote for over twenty thousand dollars to try to fix Robbins. Right. Was, was, yeah, was I, I, Robbins, it was Robbins like a sand bed underneath grass, or was it a, an injection system? I, I think it was a sand bed, and then they had actually. I think then I think they tried to inject some more sand in it because they didn't think they had enough sand in it. They had a number of things. So it was a little bit. I don't know the details. It was before my my time. I, I, again, I think it might be a great method to use on some fields. I could see Thorndike, where it's kind of clay, it might work. But I, I just don't know if we want to have to call out one particular. So what if we say some strategies may include? Yeah, May would suggest that we should look at other strategies as well. Yeah. Some or or action or if you would you rather have um actions to increase the drainage of existing fields and just leave it vague as to what you might do? Uh, well is that well, is it just a drainage issue? Yeah, yeah. It may or may not be. Right. But I mean, Tom, Tom's take was, I mean, Ian's take was that, you know, the increasing drainage significantly could take a field that was out of service for three days down to one day, which I would think would be pretty helpful. Well, I... I mean, the issue is if the fields are soggy, then I think trying to figure out a way to get get the water to drain quicker would probably be a good thing. You know, no. particularly because I think a in lot of- In some cases that water... may be true, yeah. Yeah, because, that may well, not again, be we're saying may, we're not mandating, yeah. you know, we're, we're saying, you know, the town should do X. Um, if I add may here. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So some strategies may include and then we talk about a couple and then in here, instead of it being uh, helps, it's going to say may help. How's that feel? Okay. 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 Better. Better. Good enough to move on. Maybe. We want to keep talking. <laughs> Leslie, Joe, anyone else? All right, moving Let's on. Yep. This is just a footnote. By the way, if people have comments and footnotes, we can look at those too. I just, they don't necessarily easily come, come up here, but if you have yep. a question on a footnote, flag it first. So we had a bunch of changes here. Do we need to like really explain in detail how a wet bulb globe thermometer works, or is that something that we can, I don't know, maybe, I, I hate to like throw another another footnote into the mix, but something that just, you know, describes that. I, I Cause I know that there was a comment last week about, so, you know, what is that or something like that? You can throw it in an appendix, but it wouldn't be a short appendix. Okay. So we did talk more in here about it, um, the other option would be we throw it in a footnote. I mean, I'm fine with it as is, but, yeah, Ron, it's a but I've used them, but I'm just thinking. For, You're right. I mean, even here, we're defining it, but we're not like, describing how it works. Um, right. Having said that, I'm, I am i don't want to be dismissive of it, but I'm not sure how many people are like desperate to. I mean, I, I don't care. Know that. I just wanted to bring it up as something that because I'm, I'm frequently <laughs> I mean, I'd be happy to drop a footnote, you know, explaining a little bit more what, how you take, you know, if you can find something good, Marvin. I, you know, yeah, send it I can you. find something and, and I, I will I will send it to Natasha later. I'm I'm fine with an additional footnote okay. here. But, but I, I don't care either way. I just didn't know whether the group as a whole thought that that was necessary. You know, I, I'm personally fine with the text as is. I think it's a fair point. I mean, you're right. We're defining here, but we're not really we're not really explaining how one how it works I, for our purposes i thought this middle of the road explanation sufficed but okay that's fine again i'm just, i'm just you know 
I was just yeah. throwing it out there. But I, I, I personally am perfectly okay with it as is. You know, I don't think that that's a problem. So most of the things here are just clarify, you know, changes to either fill in a gap, which is we never defined what what yeah. globe, globe temperature was, or clarifying some things. And, and by the way, two of my two of the edits we're not going to get into tonight because they're non-substantive. But you know, uh, Natasha, later on we we get the initials wrong. You know, here okay. we say WBGT and other places. There are two other places where we say oh, w, there is one WGBT. Right so. There's actually one right here. Yeah. First one is if you if Oh yeah. W B G T is it W B G T? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's wet bulb. Yeah. Wet bulb I, globe thermometer. I think that was one of the ones I caught. So but we I, can we'll fix those in touch. Yeah. Yeah. I would whatever. actually lean towards not putting how to measure because we want like the sock all the different clubs to measure the same way, which I would assume eventually comes from Leslie and Joe versus someone just saying this is how you do it and so so really you need like a procedure that the rec department puts out and trains what whoever's going to do these measurements rather than just the random thing that's in it, that we cite here which i imagine like the procedure is almost always similar but I, and, I and these are and these are not complicated they're not really complicated instruments so that's not a problem okay. so i'm just highlighting footnotes I'm just highlighting footnote 17 because I added in here, I felt that we probably should give credit where credit is due, which is the high school. So this is just referencing um, Sam Jones, the athletic trainer. Yep. Yep. Okay. That was the only footnote I added. You'll see sometimes I took something out I thought it was unnecessary, you know, extraneous, gratuitous, whatever. Tell me to stop at any time. I'm just trying to keep us going. Maybe just slow down. Okay, sorry. <laughs> what, you can't go that fast? Because <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, this, this doesn't really have page. Oh, there it is, page five. So like for instance, this edit was just a response to people who said, you know, if we're going to be measuring temperatures in fields, why should it just be artificial turf fields? You know, why, why not asphalt? Why not? Well, but okay. I, you know, if we I set thought, a, if we set a certain number, sure. I thought we really said that we were only talking about fields, and we didn't sure. want to be talking about tennis courts and other things. Correct. Can we just say leave it at other fields? Get rid of playing surfaces because if, if you're comfortable with that, I I am. Yeah. I just wasn't sure how yeah. people felt about asphalt and tennis tennis courts. We don't want to do every playground. We can leave it as as well as other fields. Yeah. Okay. I don't want poor Joe on a hot summer day to be bouncing around playgrounds and tennis courts and basketball courts. <laughs> I'm gonna scroll down to heat impacts on the environment. These were all kind of you know changing yeah. degrees to the degree sign. Just giving you'll, you'll also see that there are some places where I got rid of things that are sort of, and it's my fault because in the original draft, probably in some of these sections, I you know, anything that was sort of an ad and an unnecessary adjective like, yeah, fast increasing, mm -hmm. increasing, yeah, it was so. Uh, have we resolved that question about the? what I raised before earlier. Temperatures of over 150 degrees have been routinely recorded on artificial turf fields during June and summer months compared to natural grass with temperatures of less than 90 degrees. If we can't find that source, I would argue we just need to take that sentence out. I mean, because the, the question has come up before as to where have these temperatures routinely been recorded? Yeah, I'm not uh, you know, I'm not sure, and I might. I hope I'm not offending the environmental group because I think it came from them. I'm not sure that sentence is needed because earlier we talk about the temperature different in the section. I think I originally drafted for the safe, you know, with the safety group. It was, it was. We talk about the temperature differences, and I'm not sure you need this here. 
when why don't we do this why don't we just double check uh that reference the 23 and or 24, 24. turns out to be um and if that doesn't check out then we can remove it okay that's fair all right so we're going to check out 24 yeah yep. and if we can't verify it we'll remove it just writing a note <clears throat> sorry guys okay sorry. all right mm -hmm. We're a quarter of the way there. Yep. <laughs> so then we get into the skin and bacteria. Do you know what that OBG o OBJ in the dotted down all the Yeah, I have I have that as a notation to take that out. Yeah. I think if I accept it. I mean it was in the see it stays. Yeah, I'll figure I don't know why it's doing that. Because it was also it was in the uh accepted version as well. Yes, you're right. It somehow that's why I had a notation to it's gonna go. So it was very unusual. It was an unusual one. Raise the roof, Leslie. I just got it out. <laughs> you are good. I know. <laughs> All right, we're good on that. Uh just going through skin and bacteria. We're gonna go on to injury rates. Anyone have any thoughts? We'll also make sure there aren't any uh, orphaned headings. You know, yeah, just a, yeah, the concussions. Why? Why are some of these? Yeah, concussions really, should yeah. not be hyperlinked. So I'll yeah. tell you why. Because it was really hard in this document to unlink them. Ah. So that's that's one of the final edits that I have to do. I have it noted. Yeah. No hyperlinks. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can just undo. And like the edit you'll see at the end of this paragraph, it was just. It looks like a substantive change, but it really, it's just was right. repeating the sentences right ahead of it. So it's its actually not substantive. Oh, okay. I'll fix it after. Okay. Um, I, I just had one comment in, wait, is it this? Yeah, in this section. Okay. Um, um, a little lower down, a couple of paragraphs down. Okay, hang on one second. Yeah, yeah. Thing. It's going to give me a hard time. Every time I try to unlink it, that's what happens. Ugh. It mm. kicks me out. So I have to do it in the regular word version. So mm. just close your eyes. Bear with me for one second. You just need a little screensaver that pops up when you're doing this. Right. All right. I think we were on heat impacts and then we went to injuries, yeah. a mm -hmm. skin and then injuries. Okay. Marvin. Um, so at, at the bottom, the last paragraph on page nine, and this is kind of a, a kind of a picky thing. But well, before we get yeah. to that, just I want to make sure no one had anything on. There was a couple you, red things. Which you just scrolled through. Yep. Sorry. No, I think it was at the yeah the last bottom of the last page. Bottom of this page? A little bit more. Yeah, somewhere in page eight, there were some. Oh, okay. We just took that. Out. I think I just moved that. Yep. That's this. Cool. Yeah, you just moved that. Some things just weren't in the right place, but I just moved them. Unfortunately, when you move something, it comes off as a deletion. Everyone okay here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Going to go on to page nine. Okay. Marvin, did you have something at the end yeah, of this page? Yeah, yeah. It was Is just it... um uh let me see. I'm I'm I actually I'm I actually have a like the the PDF of the red line version. Okay. Um but it says, you know, a, a 2023 review of research related to player injuries. Um and then at on the next page it says, in contrast, a 2022 peer-reviewed study. And to me, there's an inference that the you know the 2022 study was peer reviewed. And that the 2023 one wasn't. I just, you know, if if that makes sense. Um, uh, whereas the, the 2023 review right was, you know, right. 
So that was actually the 2023 review was peer reviewed. And it reviewed, that's a fair point, reviewed, Marvin. And you know, like upwards of 50 other peer reviewed research papers. So yeah, that's I, a fair uh, point. And we can take yeah. out peer reviewed. If someone clicks the link, they'll know it's peer reviewed. It'll obviously right. say it's peer reviewed. Okay. So, you know, so yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thanks. Hi. All right, we good here? Can you guys see this okay? Is it yeah. too small? It is small. Bigger. That's okay. That's why I'm leaning I, I can make it a little bit bigger. I just yeah, wanted us to... What's that? It's helpful for it to be a little bigger. Yeah. Okay. Is that better? Yep. Okay. So just going to keep scrolling a little bit. Keep going. <laughs> Chemical impacts on human health and the environment. And I think, I think the... Mike, did you have a comment? Yes, I did. I, I think it's it's important to note that this section is almost 100% uh, health, human health, and does not really deal with the environment issues. The environmental issues actually come in the next section about runoff and impacts there. So I was going to just suggest changing the title here. Uh, just to chemical impacts on human health or something along those lines. And in the following section, deal with uh, environmental impacts. Sounds good. Yeah. Sure. The only thing I want to caution about this is I think we took out in the environmental section, we took out a big chunk that was talking about um, some of the other chemicals and we referenced this section. Um, do we, so for that reason, do we want to keep it human health and the environment because we're explaining the, the chemicals associated with artificial turf? Well, the, the chemical descriptions in this section about pause and heavy metals and all of those things really deal here with human health. Okay. That's why I was suggesting that any references to the environment that might still be in here should go in that separate section, which could be called something like, um, you know, uh, which is down below, chemical and particular runoff impacts on the environment. Okay, so let's just, we'll strike out and the environment here? I I think so, yeah. because you're not really dealing with the environment in this section. Okay. Everyone okay with that? Yep. yep. And I think that um, that can be, you know, any references we need to include in this section, we certainly can. Okay. Okay, still scrolling. Am I going too fast? Like we we know, like for instance, the paragraph here needs to, those yeah, two paragraphs that are merging into one. We'll fix that. Yeah. yeah. I did cite this, so yeah. that's why it's crossed out. Right. Okay. So was just changing tense or yeah. something, you know. Yeah. I don't know oh, what to do if I'm going to no, going. Are still in quotes. I thought we were going to lose them. Oh, I thought we were going to add one. Do we want to lose them? Uh, they, were, I, they, I, in the original, the original draft from the health group to the big committee, it was in quotes. And then I thought there was a conversation at some point about removing the quotes. Yeah, I don't care. Again, it's just. Well, well what? I mean, why do we need quotes? We don't really, right? I think not. Let's take them out. And if people want to know more, they can look them up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like anything else in here. Okay. You okay on that page 11? Going to go down to 12? Almost halfway there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now we get into this section here that I know we had a lot of back and forth on. Yeah. Um, Mike, did you also have some comments? Yeah, I, I think um, we did want to put in here uh, that last sentence, quinone has been found to be highly toxic. I think there's also a sentence in here related to freshwater fish and the toxicity of 
the six PPD quinone uh, impacts on those freshwater fish. And I think it's down in the other section, but I think I sent you a suggested um, reworking of that. But I think it, I, I think it's just here about, you know, we we're talking about all these chemicals and public health issues, and we've found now about six PPD. So I think it was useful to include that here, which it, which it is. I just think it was just... Uh, we can put the toxicity to fish later on in the environmental section. I think that's fine too, but it was helpful to know that know that up front. Perhaps that's an option. Well, and we took, we that, took that, that. that it was highly toxic to the coho salmon. There's also a, a reference to freshwater fish. I, that's I think later on. I'd have to look and see where that so, is. I think it's telling us to like six PPD will be discussed in the chemical and runoff section. And we took, I assume the information about the salmon and the fish is in the chemical. Yeah. Runoff. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah. So let's make sure it's there when we get there. Yep. All right. So we're okay fine. with that. Yeah, I think so. What was that, Leslie? I think this seems fine. Okay. This particular reworking. Okay, talk about the hierarchy of controls here. This is not my favorite table, but it just is what it is. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. the clearest. It's the best we can do. Yeah. They can go to the real document. Yeah. Um, I'm going to this, like, can you guys see both of those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll go to alternative infills. Sorry. Okay. A few changes in here. Much better. So instead of saying the benchmark study, we went with um, according to this is exactly what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. change this up a bit okay yeah okay gonna go down to chemical and particulate runoff yeah that's the one we may want to re uh, recall as chemical in particular runoff impacts on the environment because that's where this really comes in yeah I agree that works for folks yep. mm -hmm. just like that you may have an extra space there. Yeah, I think you put yeah. an extra space in. Can I just have I like a question? extra spaces. <laughs> if you could just go back to the table for a second. I just kind yep. of caught this, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. No infill. Well, it says, you know, it says no infill material was clearly free of concern. Now, correct, and I know it's not on the table, but isn't isn't sand a infill material that is used. I don't think it's recommended by industry. It is on the table as acrylic. Sand. Sorry, where is it? Unless there's different sand. Acrylic coated sand is the second to last column. Right. But I think I was just thinking just sand in general. I, I go I again I'm kind of seeing double. So <laughs> I just didn't know if we talked about you know sand as being a base infill. Are you talking about like the sand injection that we were talking to about no, before? No, no, no. Just plain sand. As just mean. plain sand. You right. know, it doesn't fall sure. under mineral or plant. No, probably not. Sorry. That's okay. I don't want to get caught up on it, but I, I just know that, you know, earlier versions of artificial turf did have sand infills. Um, I'm sure potentially they didn't work for various reasons, but that's okay. Forget it. I just was... Joe, do you want me to scroll up? No, that's fine. I no. I don't think we are. I don't think, other than in talking about the right. injection, that we ever really talked right about artificial, about sand as a. As no, I, I I know, and I guess my point is because I even think Ian talked about green sand, right? Correct. I think 
that's the acrylics. Yeah. Is, is that a good, it's, yeah. just, it's just the, 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 the definitive statement that no wind film material was clearly free of concern. Um, Where uh, is that, Joe? Up above? Yeah. No. Above. That's, that's the, it's the Tory statement in their, right. in their evaluation. Go up above. It's another up, up, above. No, it's actually below. Oh, it's below. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Keep, keep going. Down here? Right there. Um, no infill material was just below that. It is, it, that's a quote, right? Yeah, but go below this. There you go. Yeah. I I thought that there was something about sand. If you just use sand, that that's not a really good playing surface for athletes, but I don't. Again, I, I just, it's just, just a kind of that definitive statement that no infill material was clearly free of concern. No infill table, maybe no infill material in that table. But I don't think we can change that because I think that's a quote well, from Turi's hmm. assessment. So we that's either have to take the quote out or just. Or but, put it in you, but yeah, it just if you Sorry, understand. Like that. It I'm just good. definitively says no infill material. And I think that just, again, again, maybe everyone in this table clearly has concern and I'm willing to say, yeah, it sounds like it does. But we really didn't talk about every potential infill material. There is that quote right there. Yeah. Where is it? Right. It's oh. right there. Above the that arrow. That quote wasn't from Turi. That quote was from... Well, well it is. It is Turi. It is Turi. Um, okay, I thought it was that Turi report. Okay, but it is a okay. Got it. It's Turi document. It's some of these things go in a little different. Rachel Massey. Yeah. Yeah. I I just don't know. I mean, if do we need it? I mean, we can reference the table. The table clearly shows, you know, the various concerns and issues with those infills that have, that table has studied. Is this table in here? Because there are two different sections. That section with the table was the health people and oh, the infill oh, material. Oh, oh. I don't I don't know where they got that from. I mean, I know they got that from this, but we didn't get our table from this source. That table right. came from another Turi presentation. Yeah. Okay. Right. Somewhere. So that's where sorry. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys seeing everything on my screen? Oh, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> Where are you going, Mommy Poppins? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to get back to my document here. It's up it's up the red line. Uh, uh go go two to the right. There you go. The tabs, probably. Up at the tabs. Oh, up at the tabs, though. Two to the right. Uh, Thank see. you. Nope. 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 There it is. There's the red line. Drive. Okay. Thank you. Whew. <laughs> See, don't share your screen. Yeah. Uh, All right. I'm going to X out of this. So do we want to do anything here? I would leave it. I think it's okay. But I don't know what the group feels. I think it's telling us we have to look more to understand and we don't we can't just choose an infill because it's a different infill. Right. Yeah, I think it's okay. I would note that we have a capital I in infill, and I thought that was maybe part yeah. of the direct quote. You but... got good eyes, David. I noticed the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Where was it? Right. No. no capital yeah, I. Yeah, right there. Just uh, make that a lower Hi, case. David. Fine. I'll give you that. <laughs> All right. Hard bargainer over here. Right. Ready to move to the <laughs> next. Don't mess section. with me. All right. Are we ready to go on to runoff? Particular runoff impacts on uh, the environment. There is, yeah, right uh, there. Um, it's oh, it's the next part of it. But right. if we go right down, it says uh, impacts on human health yeah. and takeoff yeah. and the environment. Yeah. Oh yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And we are going to remove the hyperlinks. Yep. 
you saw what happened to me, so I'm not doing it. I'm not going to try not it again. Now. <laughs> well, before Friday. Do we have a number for the appendix? Yes. So I want to talk to. Do you want me to bring this up here, or do you want to talk about the? Why appendix? don't we hold off on the appendix okay. please till the end? That just okay. keep the. Oh, the question I had is about that. Um, there's a table outlining the potential negative impacts. Do we want that in the appendix, or do we want to include it in the text because we're talking about those negative impacts? I mean, it, it doesn't. We have other tables in the text. Maybe yeah. it would just be easier. I'll pull up the table at the end, or do you want to just pull it up now? Either way, I think it it just could be helpful to find it in the text rather than have to page back to the appendix. All right. Let me go to my table here. Okay. Can you guys see this? Appendix one? Okay. No. No. See the report. There okay. you go. Now. Okay. So this was the is the appendix. Yeah. I mean, it could go either place. I think it's it's useful perhaps to have it right in front of people when they're looking at the text. Gonna scroll up just a little. I think we should be consistent and where we've already started putting tables in where they're appropriate. This one doesn't look so cumbersome that we can't just put it in the text. Okay, good. All right, so are we all in agreement we're putting it in the text? Sure. Okay, I'm going to go back to my other screen. Okay. You guys see the report? Yep. Okay. I like this for myself. Okay. And then we took this all out. Yeah. The only part that I think maybe should go back in is the last mm, sentence. These chemicals. Individually in combination pose a potential hazard to wildlife, water quality, et cetera, all the way down to the, the two footnotes there. I would just put those back at, right before the as observed. That I've highlighted? Where I would put it. I agree. We got. Uh, don't we have to talk about the freshwater fish here? Yeah, we put it out above. So actually, I think we have to add find, more. I have to find where that. Uh, it's right. It's the sentence before that. Oh yeah. Um, as and in fact, that's that's from the same. I think seventy-eight or seventy-nine. Um. Yeah, I would say additionally all the way through the two footnotes should go in before as observed. And then I think we're in good shape. So don't we have to only just get rid of that one first sentence and we want the starting at elevated concentrations of PFAS have adverse effects on aquatic organisms? Cause we didn't talk, we talked about human. Yeah, yeah. Right, no, I think you're right, uh, Jill. So we really, instead of taking this whole paragraph, we should have just taken out the first sentence. Whoa. Okay. Because we don't need to Hi. describe what what PFAS are and lead are. We just have to start at like. So, so all we want to do is take, take out the first sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And then you've got. I'll fix that later. Yeah, and then you've got the two footnotes where that comes from. Sorry. No problem. Okay, so this is what we're leaving in there, the highlighted text? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think Jill, Jill's right. Agreed. Okay. Everyone good? Yeah. And Natasha, I think in the earlier section, you took out quinone, you were just calling it six PPD. Was that like something you purposely took out? Yeah. Quinone? Did you want so to be consistent with that? Yeah. So here's what the, where are you seeing that? Um, right after the paragraph, you corrected that next paragraph. Six PPD, okay. Yeah, right there. So we are talking about, and Mike, I'm going to rely on you guys here, um, the 6-PPD quinone. So what we were talking about is it's 6-PPD, and then that's that's the material that's coming off the tire, and once it's aerosolized, it becomes the 6-PPD quinone. And right. it's, so, it's exposure to oxygen and ozone that just from being out in the world. That thanks. Transforms it. Okay. So we labeled it incorrectly up top, so we just labeled it 6-PPD. And now the rest of the document should be six PPD because that's what we're talking about. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, though. Okay. So you will see that an upcoming paragraph is this was a substantive addition uh, to end end this, this section. Yeah, it should be noted, right? Okay. And frankly, Natasha and I added this because. Um, it was raised in some of the comments. I don't think anything we're saying here is controversial. Maybe it is, but I think it shouldn't be. Yeah. I think the it's just an acknowledgement that I think we've always operated under this assumption, but it was not actually in the report. Our conversations seem to, you know, the idea that we don't really know what's in the current natural turf. We've never done a study of this. So although we have concerns about runoff from artificial turf, we can't say that they're any more or less than what would be related to regular right. term, because we've never tested it and maybe someone should. That's all this sort of says. Maybe someone should, you know, we raise these concerns, but in the grand scheme of things, they may not, they may be no greater than what's already, what's already there. Yeah, Jim, the only thing I would recommend is that we change that sentence. It may very well be. Yeah that existing natural turf fields contain some amount of those chemicals. I don't know what notable means here. I would just say that they may contain these chemicals, in which case runoff concerns, you know, the rest of it. I, I think the notable amounts is sort of a strange configuration. Yeah, I agree with getting rid of notable for some and also just starting with the word existing. Yeah, that's right. It may very yeah. I would get rid of the. Uh, it may very well be, and just start to say existing natural turf fields may contain some amounts of these chemicals, or something along those lines. I'm fine with that if everyone else is. The strike here. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't help. <laughs> I think. The second half of that sentence is speculative. I don't think we have data to substantiate what mm -hmm. the of concerns might be compared with the existing fields. I mean, in fact, of course it's speculative. Data. That's the point. That's we the don't point. know. Which, where we took out that it may very well be. It's existing natural turf fields may contain some amounts of those chemicals. May contain. May contain. What about further study is recommended to determine if the amount of chemicals in the runoff is? I think we can leave it. I'm not sure how we could even. My perp, I kept it as sort of yeah. anodyne as one could get. You know, like 
Yeah, I, we don't I, know. Someone should look into this. Yeah, yeah, I agree with David. I think that you could just put a period after chemicals. We and, and further study. I, I, I actually have to disagree with that, though. I think that second part is the whole point of this, which is we're and I'll just say that we're raising alarm bells about runoff from artificial turf. I think rightly so. But our legitimate point is, well, you know, you've never tested these other fields. How do you know they're they're any better? Well, you could say be no greater or or no less than. I mean, you could you could phrase that in several different ways. We could say maybe no different than. Yeah. Yeah, I think different makes a big difference. <laughs> maybe no different than so much less leading instead of greater. Yeah. No different than. No different. Yeah. No different than, and by the way, this was one of my other sort of nonsense than those from existing fields. I don't think it's grammatically correct to just say then from, I think then those from existing fields or those. Yeah. Are people comfortable with this language now? Mm -hmm. David has his hand up. David. Uh -oh. David, you're muted. Sorry, I pressed the button, but it didn't unclick. I'm confused about the logical endpoint of the statement, because to me, if we test and find that natural turf fields have runoff that is problematic, then that's a point to change the management regime and or look to mitigate the contaminants that are coming off of those fields. I don't think that it really bears on a comparison to artificial turf. I, I'm not sure why making this apples to apples comparison is valid when we're really talking about apples and oranges. Does yeah. that make sense? Ian was saying they're to totally different systems. You're right. I thought we were talking though about more about like, you know, the rain and when when it sort of the atmosphere, you know, whatever's in the atmosphere, it, it rains, it then could potentially be putting some of these things onto either a natural grass field or an artificial turf field. That was my thought of why we were sort of going this route, not necessarily Sure. So in that eventuality, atmospheric deposition is going to happen onto an artificial turf field at the same rate as a natural grass field. So that there really shouldn't be any measurable difference from atmospheric deposition in the runoff between the two. I, 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 think I, I just don't understand what the point is of noting the runoff from noting contamination from the runoff of a field that's not also adding to that if atmospheric deposition is the point you know what i'm saying that you know there there's pfas and there's six ppd etc in artificial turf at least presumably there has in many cases been found to have been those things in artificial turf installations. And on top of that, whatever's raining out of the sky is going to land on an artificial turf the same way as a, as a grass field. Did we also talk about <laughs> fertilizers though? I'm sorry. Didn't, wasn't that part of it too? The fertilizers that we Jim, used. you're on mute. Jim, Jim's on mute. Too. Sorry, we didn't we didn't mention fertilizers. I could have. I mean, I was just trying to keep this relatively, relatively simple point. I see if Jill had her hand up. I I thought this was related to some of the public comment, which was about the fact that we did not have testing on our fields, and you know, if we were given a budget as a turf committee, we may have decided to like test our fields, and 
I think part of the site-based decision-making really talks about what are the contaminants in the fields. So I took this, reading this the first time, to say, if we were to look at a specific section, we would want to do further study on what the existing field looks like. And not necessarily like look at every field in the town, but if we were looking at a certain site, we've talked about Thompson, what, what are the chemicals in that area anyways? And then that might be one data point that makes the eventual decision of how we replace that field. So I was actually going to suggest that this further study in this area should actually be one of our recommendations at the end. Like any any site that is considered should should have some like soil quality testing first. I think that idea is, is valid. And I think that it's implied, if not specifically mentioned, that when we talking when we're talking about the site specific requirements. Uh, we can certainly include soil. Um, and I think the other, the key issue here is runoff. And I don't know that we have the ability to suggest people check the runoff of every field, but that would be what's going on. I, you know, I don't know. To break the logic, I'm fine. I'm fine getting, oh, sorry, Natasha. You, no. you, um, I'm fine getting rid of the, part after the comma, but I would then add existing natural fields may also contain amounts of those chemicals. Right, period. that was part of, we don't know what's in the soils. I, I'm fine with that comment. I, I'm a little, and have been a little uncomfortable with, with it kind of as a comparative thing, because I think that's like bending over way backwards to try and suggest an equivalency, which I don't think is true. Well, so are we kind comfortable of, with I mean, with... kind of from David's point, you know, that, you know, if, if you've got a crumb field, there's there's no question that the runoff from that is going to be really different than than any other natural turf field, you know. But, um, you know, if you can t contain, you know, some amounts of these chemicals, I'm fine with that. But but then the, after that part makes me a little bit. So if the sentence read existing natural turf fields may also contain amounts of those chemicals. Sorry, there's a cursor yeah. that's blocking my. Yeah. Can you guys see that? No, there's that. Okay, now oh, I can... existing natural turf fields may contain, may also contain amounts of those chemicals. Period. Further study right. of the various. If, if you delete from in until the period after fields, I'd be happier. So a period after chemicals. Uh, chemicals, yeah. From from that. So have a periodic chemical and then delete everything until further study in this area is recommended. Yeah. Like the rest of that sentence. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Because there's absolutely going to be some PFAS in, in, in like everywhere just from atmospheric deposition. What chemicals though? I mean, I, no, no, that's not what I suggest. And maybe that's what Marvin was suggesting. That's not what I was suggesting. Okay. That was the second reference to chemicals I was saying. Delete the in which case runoff concerns. Oh, this one. Yes. Oh. But I don't know. Maybe that's Marvin was suggesting the other thing. I think I was looking at the other one. Um, uh, I, yeah, it's just that. Um, no, no, not all of that. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah, so, the so last if, clause, if, in which case, okay. the yeah. period. Makes sense. But then I would also just change notable to some. Some. Yeah, because that, that's a fair statement. Yeah. All right, let's take it from the top here. <laughs> um, it should be. Am I removing this no. period? Nope, nope. Okay, no, leave that. The, it may very well. It may right. very well, okay. It, it, no, it change, change, change notable to some. I thought we had deleted oh. it may very well. We took out it may, be, it may very well be Okay. And just change it to existing natural turf. Existing yeah, we did. What happened? Well, surprise. <laughs> there it is. No, oh, well, that's way back. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you know why? I think because I just undid all of it. Mm. All right. It so should be that that 
sentence should say existing natural turf fields hey, Carter, very yeah. may also contain some amounts of those chemicals. Yes. Period. Right. Existing natural turf fields may also contain some amounts of those chemicals. Period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And Further study in this area is recommended. Do you want to say is recommended or is suggested? I don't know. I don't know if anyone suggested. Cares. Suggested. Get Shall rid of in runoffs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yep. Yep. And change recommended to suggested. So that's the question that I had, which was really for Jill. You, Jill, you were saying that you wanted to include something about this in the final recommendations. Were you saying that? You wanted yeah. to look at playing surfaces for, well, I mean, runoff in general and sort of soil contamination and so forth. What, what were you suggesting there? Uh, yeah, I guess it wasn't necessarily runoff because if, I mean, I guess we could have baseline runoff, but then we're just going to choose something and it doesn't help if after, if what we choose after has worse runoff. But I think baseline understanding of what's in the soil might make like, I think that's already true at the high school, the original turf field at the high school was chosen to be turf because of what was under the ground. Nowhere do we say that that should be a part of the decision making process. And maybe we don't agree on that, but I assume that that was like the limitation of our committee and we can't go do that for the whole town. But if a body was recommending a new field, I would think that they would want some kind of chemical study of that field as a part of their recommendation, whether they came out to grass or turf. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. And and not specifying exactly what the chemical studies are, I think I would leave that up to yeah. good people that are doing the work. Let's put a pin in that and just remember it for when we get to the findings and recommendations. Yeah, because I'm not sure I'm on board there. All right, so we're moving on? Stormwater yes. management? Okay. Yes. <laughs> the um, only question I had on that uh, added sentence, the ability to manage stormwater will become more, even more important. I would take out the word potentially. Uh, as precipitation events have become more severe or are becoming or something like that. It's not a question of potential, it's happening. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Just the word potentially, yeah. Okay. We're doing okay here? Yeah. Sometimes it was just moving something. It, it looks like it's being taken out, but it was just moving. Okay, yes. okay yeah, see it below. Gonna keep going. Okay, this I think I made last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got on this mm -hmm. sort of climate change resilience. Yep. Okay. Can we clarify, just go back up a second, uh, that parenthetical? Um, there is well, that was, that was in response to people, some public comment saying, um, well, no, 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 plenty of people are recycling. Well, well, some people are recycling, some people aren't recycling at all. So this is sort of, rather than, you know, this is, I think, is an acknowledgement that it's not consistent. 
we just have happening consistently instead of the parentheses. Just get rid of currently happening and change well, it. I, I think there, well, I, maybe I'm wrong on this. I think there's also some people who dispute that recycling, true recycling is happening at all. Absolutely. There, there's a very mixed message out there. So I didn't want to yep. assume okay. that, you know, I mean, I, I personally think it is happening, but others will yep. say whatever is happening is not really recycling. So this, rather than pick a side, I think we just, this is what I tried to find a middle ground on. Yeah, I think, you know, all right. We'll move along. Okay. So now we're going to get into the cost comparison. And um, I think we are pretty much okay with the first couple of sections, one, two. And then this was what I had added in regards to the conversation last week about the CPA. And I'm hoping that I captured that correctly. Yeah, I believe you did. I'm reading it. I uh, mean, reading it in the I know not redlined report. It, it came across factually. Yeah, a lot of that came from Joe's uh, input, but I I think this is I I don't know about CPA uh, well enough to know, but this seems reasonable to me. Well, yeah, and I think um. The biggest thing was Leslie sending over the, the document there and us making reference there. We were able to kind of clarify some things. So I think that was helpful. Right. So we're okay with this section here. Okay. Yep. All right. Now it gets a little weird. Um, and I have to see on this red line. All of this is not. All right. Just bear with me for a second. So if you'll remember correctly, um, I had like three or four graphs in there before, mm -hmm. and then there had been some conversation about maybe there being too many graphs or, um, maybe not enough graph. I don't know. So I took out those graphs and because it was so difficult with the red line, I don't think you got all of that on the red line. So I just accepted all the changes and put in just the new, if we like what we had prior to, I can go back. I just this looks don't... pretty good. This is much cleaner. Yeah. And I think it gets at the bottom line, which is really what we're concerned about. So substantively I did want to discuss the chart. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not sure I like this iteration of it. I'm open to being convinced that it's better than what we had. I realized one of the criticisms of the prior version was that it was maybe too busy and there was too many figures. Um, but what I liked about the prior chart was it showed that there are discrepancies in terms of viewpoints about the costs of installation and maintenance. Here it's sort of just sort of picking picking one version and saying that's the cost of installation when we actually had varying figures from different sources on the installation. You some could actually put... artificial turf was more, some saying artificial turf was less. I, I, I feel like comfortable sort of us deciding what's the right one and instead just showing everything we found and letting people draw their own conclusions. Yeah, I think maybe we... the conclusion I... is there isn't a consensus about this sort of thing. Yeah. I think we can put a caveat in there or and say these are approximate numbers uh, that will vary by site or something along those lines. But this is a gener general, and or you could just put in a range instead of the actual single number in each category. Yeah, I think we had ranges from those from the other tables when we when you looked at it. Yeah, I don't know what we have suggested, Mike does what I sort of satisfies the issue I'm I'm raising though. I mean, I see where you're coming from, but I mean, I, we received very varying numbers yeah. and I don't know, I can't, I'm not an expert. I can't tell who has it right, but I think it's, our readers should know that 
you know, opinions vary on this. And right now that this current chart doesn't convey that. Well, we could certainly take out the whole table and say just that, that uh, costs uh, will vary a lot depending on site and type of uh, surface being included in the estimate. Um, we don't have to actually, I mean, you can put in some range from the old tables, uh, but I think what our whole motivation was is that we were not charged with dealing with cost, but we felt it was important to include it. Yeah, Mike, you, you know, I think the reason why it was so varied is trying to get apples to apples is we, it's crazy because just in the artificial turf, you could do field turf, you could do sprint turf, you could do there's five different types of turf that probably differ between two, three hundred thousand dollars, and it's still just artificial turf installation. Right. Um, so I think you know that's why I think the numbers vary so much. It it's really project specific. There's different right. types of natural grass cost. There's you know what are you going to put rye, Kentucky, you know different types of blends. Um, so I think it, it's very hard to get a true number. So I think what Jim, I hear what Jim's saying. It's 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 a yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know in one of those charts, it did talk about, you know, um, the cost of um, natural grass, the maintenance being up to $600,000. And obviously that's like, it was a big range. Um, so I don't know. Well, maybe yeah. the easiest thing is just to take out the table and talk about it in those general terms and say there's a lot of variability depending on the site, the kind of treatment it needs, the kind of turf you're putting down, et cetera, et cetera. I, I mean, if, at, at best, I think we could only give them ranges, but even that's not very helpful. Well, and it's also a point in time. I mean. Exactly. Yeah. What, I are guess... the, what, are, what are the costs? You know, what are the issues in the supply chain that, that are going to impact the cost at a particular given point in time? Right. And I think that the other note there at the bottom of the upper page where it says it doesn't include all the other things, the other costs for the right. field. So I think we're talking about huge variability. Maybe we can just say there's huge variability in uh, in deciding which field should be artificial or which should be natural. Right. I, I mean, you know, I'll go back. You know, when we did herd field, we got an estimate. We got funding. We returned, was it $400,000, Joe? Yeah. When when we actually went and did the project, yeah. <laughs> so you know estimates are just that, right? So I maybe mean, go ahead, Jim. Well, I guess I I guess I I, I don't know. I, maybe we don't have. I, I don't want to force Natasha to go have to move through a bunch of screens, but I I never had a problem with the old chart. Uh, maybe others did, but I, I I'd be perfectly fine going with the old chart, although I haven't looked at it in a while, but. If people had a problem with it, I can find some middle ground, but I I don't know. I'm I'm fine with the old version of this. Yeah, there were multiple charts, as I recall. Yeah. I think there were multiples. I I think wasn't the main point. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm going way back to one of our early meetings. I think Joe brought it up in the capital committee, was that it had to be understood that basically the cost differentials between artificial and natural grass, right? That was so when you're making your decision, you know, it, it, part of it was everything we talked about environment and everything, but also was a, there was a financial consideration, right? Is that why we were including it? Because they wanted, we, it was part of the decision-making process. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Or are you still seeing the report? No, still seeing the report. we're not seeing your screen. I'm just trying to find the um, old version here. No, I I think you're right, Joe. It was just kind of one more comparison point, you know, differentiating. Okay, I found sort of the old one. Do you yeah. want me to switch to that? We can, see, wanna... we can see it. That's what we're oh, seeing. you can. Yeah, we can see yeah, it. We... Sorry. No, that's good. 
got to tell me when you can see my screen. You can see it. All right. This is, this is fine. This is annual maintenance. This is not the cost of installation. But I think they're no. coming down further. Yeah. It wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it separated them out into three different sections, I think. I so think it might that... be closer to the top, the one yeah. about installation. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Yeah. So there was, I'm sorry, there's two. Installation, installation right there. And yeah. then annual. Yeah, that's, that would be fine with me, I think, uh, even though it's a little more work to go through for the reader, I think it's more realistic. Yeah, and it doesn't really focus on this one Tom Irwin advisors, which I think the mm -hmm. other numbers mostly just come from him. Well, I think that was my complaint, which is we're sort of picking the one we think is the right one in the new current chart. And I don't I don't like that. I'd rather show show the reader we got all sorts of numbers and draw your own conclusions as to yeah. what you think this costs. And so, again, and again, the real number comes down to, you know, as a municipality, what we get in a bid. Well, yeah. I think that's important. I think that we if it's not in there. If we go back to these three charts, uh, we need to put that caveat in there that things will change a lot based on individual site conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Do, do we not acknowledge that though? I feel like we might acknowledge that up top. I don't remember what that said above that chart. Yeah, I think it's in there. Yeah, I think it's up here. Somewhere. Right. Yeah. So I do think we're we're catching that. It's not as close to the chart. But right. I'm sensitive right, so to we... the time. So I yeah. It's not that I want to like short circuit mm -hmm. this discussion, but I, I do think we, yeah. we're going to have more discussions about the findings and recommendations. And I just want to get a sense of what people would like to see here. We'll go back to the other screen. So uh, I think, did we reach consensus that we're going back to this section, the way that it was written? And with the three charts so. instead of the one? Yeah, and, in, and, and somewhere in there in my notation that, you know, as a municipality, we're subject to a public bid process. Sure. Be fine with that. Okay. Though I'm sure town meeting does understand that. I, I am sure they do. Okay. So we'll go on to importance of field maintenance. This is where we struck out the uh, organic and we kind of combined everything here. So. Do you want me to keep scrolling down? Well, we kind of decided to put the chart in for the other appendix. <laughs> so we probably should talk about whether this these appendix charts can fit right in the report. Okay. So these are the, the maintenance that, and they're kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm okay with having, with leaving them in an appendix. Or I could just, I mean, I'm linking to Anne's presentation now. So I could just put as a footnote and it's gonna link you right to those slides, not right to those slides, but to that presentation, there's 10 slides in there. That seems more consistent. Like either the table is in there or it's a footnote. All right, I'm voting for a footnote. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Great, you guys are saving me from footnotes, from appendices. Uh, but, okay, yep. How are we doing with this? I think that's good. I like that the public land management plans in there. Okay. 
just going to scroll right past all this. Keep yeah. going. And this has removed this annual cost that's right. just going to be taken out. Okay, findings and recommendations, finally. So, you know, we did our best to try to be responsive to all the comments made at the last two meetings. Um, you did a great job. Oh, shoot. I'm trying to get rid of this comment. I can't. Okay. Sorry. How are we feeling about this here? Are we good? Uh, yep. Feasibility of natural turf options. Um, I mean, I do feel like no one was 100% happy with this language, but everyone felt like it was where we could as a committee land on this. Some wanted more, some wanted less. Everyone was kind of happy with, with this language, but maybe I'm wrong. If you're not, speak up now, I guess. And future projects implies anything that is not shovels in the ground yet. Well, that goes down to the footnote. Got it. Okay. We kept the footnote. Yeah. I think they, uh, Morgan, has I guess been, it's now 98. I have it as 96 or whatever, but now it's 98. Yeah. David Morgan had some really good language for that footnote, but I'll let him deal with that. Well, before we get to the footnote, is everyone fine with the above the line text? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, just yep. keep scrolling then, Natasha. We'll yep. get to the footnote in a second. But we've added language about equity. Yep. Yes. Gotten rid of the default language. Added a qualifier developed or redeveloped. It's often we're not developing fields, we're redeveloping fields. Now we go into our references, which you, I'm not going to bore you all with. Uh, can you just go back to the last paragraph? You know, are we, yep. the last paragraph I think is essentially, and I know some people say, "Oh, it's repetitive." I, I still like that it ends with our basic statement of where we landed on all this. So, yeah, I think it's consistent with the language above. I, I I would suggest taking out that bit about miracle or scourge. I don't think we, that helps us uh, or the reader. Um, Where is it? It's the, the second, second sentence. It says artificial turf is neither a modern miracle nor a terrible scourge like any manufactured product, et cetera. Those two sentences, I think, are not helpful. Well, Mike, you're no fun. I try to put a little, a little, little bit of a flourish here. Little there, zinc. You know? Come on. I mean, I know it's not Emily Dickinson, but you know. <laughs> I, you know, if you want to take it out, it's fine. I, I, I won't die on that hill, but. All right, so what do we want to do? Do we want to strike that? How many want to strike that? I would take out those I think it does the same thing if you get rid of that sentence. Oh, two sentence two. Oh. Well, let's make Mike happy. Ah, that would be great. <laughs> Since I fought long and hard. To no, 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 no. Just the one sentence. And weakness, the weaknesses. Yeah. Well, you need the, the period too, but and then and then artificial turf has its strength. Yeah. yeah, you have to get rid of the it at that point in the next sentence. So Mike mentioned having or my having a footnote bit of language, but I'm actually looking at the final sentence here. Is it one sentence? Yeah, the in the final analysis and um sorry, David, I'm just gonna hold on because Natasha, yeah. I, I want her to get this. Sorry, guys. Right before we No 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 you're keep no 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 you're keeping that. Okay. 
Okay. And our official turf can be lower. That's, yep. Sorry, I thought I was just starting. Okay. Yep. Okay. Sorry, David. Now, please go ahead. All right. I'm just going to paste into the comments what I was suggesting because it's wordsmithed. So okay. this language would replace the last sentence there. I think it kind of elaborates on what's above. I'll say, David, I appreciate your efforts, but I personally vote to keep the language the way it is. I second Jim's keeping of the language. Only because it took us a long time to get here, and uh, there were a lot of trade-offs, but I think ultimately I'm comfortable with where we are now. It's not to say I d disagree with the language you proposed, I just feel like we've had three meetings to get to this language and I'm not sure I want, to, I want the perfect to be the enemy of the good. Fair enough. How do we feel about... But I'm, I'm just speaking for myself, David. Maybe, well, maybe Leslie too, I guess, if she agrees. I don't know how I others... seconded your <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> so yes, I agree with you, Jim. I feel comfortable with this language as well. What's on the screen, you mean? What's, what's yeah, there? what's already there. I like David's, but it's probably going to take another night to <laughs> get to everybody's happy with it. I mean, honestly, I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of where our, David's language pretty much expresses my sentiment. But um, I know that there will be, it, it would require a reasonable amount of additional discussion. Hmm that we're not going to have this evening. I guess I would I would agree with Marvin then. Um. Yep. Well, then maybe we can move to the footnote. Let's do that. That's always fun. <laughs> can I ask one more thing about that last clause? I, I feel like probably it's the first sentence that or two sentences that require the most negotiation to include, well, you know, although it says it above, but the last sentence here, rephrasing it to say in a creation consideration of project proposals, town decision makers offer, blah, blah, blah. Where? Oh, in, in the text, in da David's words. Yeah, and the, so it's the last full sentence where we give the A and B options, et cetera. Oh. In the chat? In yeah. the chat, yep. And I can no longer see the chat. I mean, I can so see Natasha's would... wording. So, David, you're suggesting deleting that middle section? Change am... B, right? Yeah, there is, let's see, proper health, environmental and safety safeguards. So there is the additional... Uh, like player safety consideration in B. I'm going to see if I can paste it here so everyone can see what he's talking okay, about. Thank you. Is this what you're talking about? Just changing B to his B? Is that what you're talking about, David? Um, so the change would be adding a little bit of context at the start of A and B, and then, yeah, adding revisions to be i i like the revisions to be because it says there is like a design associated with this not just like ensuring like i think i think it's saying there's strategy but i would just say that any turf installation or any any field installation so even if you're right. if you're redoing a natural graph grass field those things are all important as well mm -hmm. yeah 
All right, I no longer know what we're talking about. <laughs> with you, Natasha. So. Oh, although it does say artificial turf. So. Right. Here, here's what I would suggest. Where we have the last sentence of the given text, i.e. what is already written. In the final analysis, the committee believes that artificial turf fields can be an option for artificial, sorry, Arlington's future field projects. Put a period there and then put the blue text to follow. Mm -hmm. Those, yes. The, yes, that what Natasha's highlighting there, yeah. What's important to me about this is the town's decision makers are named as such. And like we're specifying that this study committee is making recommendations to a particular audience, i.e. the town, and that it's giving us guidance. Like, like we've discussed previously, we're laying out the roadmap to consideration of future field concerns or proposals. And so I, I like specifying town decision makers, the recommendation that town decision makers offer A and B. And I also think that B better parallels what's above because we've talked about health environment and safety in different sections. And so given that we've named each of those, I think it's appropriate to say all three deserve further consideration basically. Mm -hmm. I also think that by saying town's decision makers, what I was saying before about we should be looking for like a evaluation of the site probably falls under A now that we've put that in. Yeah. Like I don't think any town agency would not do some aspect of testing before they came to that careful evaluation. Leslie, do you have a, a parks a park I do. meeting? It's seven o'clock, yes, that I have to okay. travel to. So we're running. Yeah, I wish we discussed this last week when yeah. we were discussing this because yeah. I mean I don't I, I personally don't like don't to bring feel up a new issue tonight, this. but I, I we we've had two weeks of discussions on this language and yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, I personally don't feel comfortable changing this now because I just don't have enough time to think through this and like I wish yeah. we had, but we didn't and I know we need to get to the footnote. So I don't know, do we want to take a formal vote on this? Well, the only thing I think that's that's uh, important is talking about town decision makers. I think that's an interesting point to include uh as as david has suggested but um well, where would you add that then well right in the existing the, language in the existing language that I we would, already agreed to i thought i would put it where, it where the a's and b's are now but that i would ask david to comment on that and i know we're running out of time but But yeah. isn't I don't understand why we need to call out the town decision makers because they're they are the decision makers in the future field projects. So I I don't quite under I I could be missing something I don't know. I mean, who else but the decision makers will be making the decision? Right, it's sort of implied. Right. I guess I, I just think thinking it's more direct. You know, it, it it plays out that there are specific decisions to be made and rather than a general consideration, for example, by, you know, advocates or town meeting members or anything, like we are specifying that the town decision makers, i.e. people who hold an official capacity are the ones who should make this particular evaluation. But if it's town owned property, it has to be. But who's I think making, this, Who's making this the decision? This reads for people who don't know that already. Like someone reading this report understands now that like um, a school in a different town is not making the decision whether we make a field or official turf. The town's decision makers 
are looking at all of the th options and and coming to that decision. So I think it speaks to history and confusion people had around that process and clarifies that like ultimately like that whatever happened in history park park and rec was aware and understood and would have say over that process and you unless know, it's a school property in which case right. we have no right but i think i think people didn't understand that the town is ultimately like talking about their land and and how their land would be be used but I also don't think it's that critical that we should spend yeah we should not get to the end of this report all right so I'll make I don't know if we want to make a motion but I'll make a motion to keep the language as is well actually yeah although I we actually need to move on I did find one typo here it's a small typo but I think the a needs to be moved before after yes um, that's, that's hopefully true. the type of thing you would allow us to make that change yeah. <laughs> without a vote of the, but yes we can do that on our own Natasha okay. we can do that on our own. it's just it's grammatically more accurate yeah. but but yeah. I agree with you I would I mean if you want to take a formal vote I'm, I'm happy to I don't think we need to but yeah but if people feel like that's the only way we can resolve this I would second Natasha's motion if that's the case Okay, are we going to take a formal vote then? Well, it sounds like no one's interested in a formal vote, so you know, people are. If anyone's interested in a formal vote, please speak now. Otherwise, I think we'll move on. And keep the language as is. Okay. Get to that footnote. Let's move to the footnote. I don't want to lose. I, I really yeah, I don't want to lose. I mean, I, I don't want to sacrifice anything that's, you know, but I don't want to lose Leslie before a final vote. All right. Can everyone see this? Well, I'm going to be late for a, an important meeting, but this is important too. So this footnote, you know, once again, we took another stab at it. I think we tried to find where the committee was last two meetings and tried to adjust the footnote accordingly. Maybe we failed. I'd like to think we succeeded. It's now framed much more as sort of a statement of fact. This is what we looked at. This is what we discussed. This is not what we discussed. This is our intent. I, I don't think any, I mean, this is just, this is what it is. Uh, we're not making any value judgments. We didn't look at individual fields. Can we, we see the entire, the, uh, the entire footnote? I'm going to just copy and paste it because I think I can't get the entire footnote to enlarge. I just have a question, Jim. Can I everyone think... see that? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, mm -hmm. Mike. Um, I think it, it's just sort of curious that we say we didn't concentrate on any particular field. We go ahead and men mention two fields. Um, I, I think that uh, the first sentence says it, and I think that you can say that uh, any field in, in the artificial uh, is, that is already uh, in the planning and development stage was not a focus of this committee or its discussion. Well, I I think that second sentence is my own two cents is necessary because when I have brought up this report, people say, well, what did you, what, what were your discussions about the high school? I know oh, we weren't focused in any one particular field. Yeah. But what were your discussions about the high school? I agree. <laughs> and this, this makes it obvious. We didn't discuss the high school. We didn't yeah. discuss Arlington Catholic. I know it might be repetitive, but it actually, I don't think is repetitive because leaving that first sentence as it is, is going to still give you get questions get us questions from people saying like okay well where are you in the high school though we didn't talk about the high school so why do we need the however do we could just say this committee's findings and recommendations should inform future development i don't know why they, sure. much injunctions needed there 
Well, I'll leave it to the rest of the committee to, you know, I mean, this it, was our it ain't a big deal. Just I don't, yeah, I don't think it matters either way. I don't think it changes the ultimate. I don't think that, however, changes anything. Yeah, it's in just... or out, I think it's still right. it still and, says. And and, and and to be honest, anybody who wants to talk about the high school is going to talk about the high school regardless of what we write. Right. I think so it's that. Mm -hmm. So you, people are comfortable getting rid of the last sentence in this footnote. Mm, I was thinking just the word, however. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't yeah, want to get rid of the last sentence. No, I think the yeah. I'm with you, Jill. Yeah, yeah. I'm comfortable with getting rid of the however. Yep. So we're essentially putting oh, um, putting turf fields on notice that when you know whatever's in process now is what's in process, but when they go to replace them, they should be looking at this report. Yeah, the only question might come up is um, what do we mean when a field is in progress or planning or development? You know, people may say, well, we're talking about that field. We need to do something in three or four years. Is that planning and development or is that not? You know, we'll let we'll let them make the decisions on that. You know, we we can we put it out there. They can interpret however they want. And I think the fact that this footnote calls out Arlington Catholic and Arlington High School makes it clear what we're talking about in the footnote and that we're not talking about anything other than those two. Okay. If that's clear, that's great. I think it is. Because the only so other at this point, in, as far as fields, there are the school fields and the town fields. There are no other town fields in the works. And the only two artificial turf fields that exist are Arlington Catholic and Arlington High School, school departments. One I of guess... which is town and the other of which is a private entity. I guess I'd say there are those who may want to apply this report to the current debate about the high school field. Yes. That's their decision. This footnote sort of says, we're just telling you what how we operated. You yes. want to make our report apply to the current debate going on at the CONCOM? Fine. That's your choice. That's, you know, that's not how we operated, but if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Right. This wouldn't stop you from doing that. It just tells you it's a matter of statement. This is where we came at this. We, we didn't, didn't talk about the field. We were focused much more on the future. You know, this is where we, you know, this is where we were, period. Because they have their own report. They've done their own study. Yeah. And if someone wants to cite, and my understanding is that the last week's CONCOM, someone did mention our report about crumb rubber, fine. You know, let them. That's yeah. not... That's not how we intended necessarily, but if someone wants to use it that way, that's their prerogative. Um, Natasha, while you're you're there, you should capitalize this on the last. Yeah, one. I was just realizing this is not where it is. Um, I just oh, pasted yeah. this into the thing. Right. right. That's right. So, are we good with this? We hope so. Well, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> but I think you already know that. <laughs> Speak now or forever hold your peace. Are you ready for us to make a motion to accept this report? Can I actually just bring up one more thing that I realized on my list of like the things I'm going to do in the next two days with Natasha it might be considered substantive. Can you jump to page two, Natasha? Yes. And then I think she just wants to show you the appendices and then hopefully then we can entertain a motion. I'm sorry, Leslie. I know time's Yeah, tight, I, just, I know. I, I don't want to hide the ball on anything to anyone here. So yeah, on page no, two, there's a I know. spot. It's just, tonight was an important public discussion. There's a spot that says dramatic, where the word dramatically appears. I can't. I don't know. I, I, I propose getting the word of, word of dramatically, but I don't know where it is now. It's somewhere on page two. Yeah. We got rid of almost all of the qualifying adjectives and adverbs like that. So I, I so you'd be say, fine if we yeah. find that word and eliminate the word dramatically. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was somewhere in here and it was unnecessary. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, Perfect. Natasha, you want to show the appendices for a yeah. minute or two and then? So I think we already talked motion. about the first appendix, um, which I'm having a really hard time with my computer. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into appendices. Come on. Are you guys able to see this yet? No? No. Coming up. Oh, not yet. We're okay. still page two. All right, we already did this one. You already saw this one. Sorry, appendices. One of the appendices we've incorporated now into the text. I think it was appendix one. I think we incorporate two. Or two. Okay, almost there. I'll share, share. This was just a map of um, the jurisdictional wetland areas. So this was going to be appendix number two. What happened to appendix one? I thought it was one. Well, this will end up being appendix one now because appendix okay. one was the value table. Right, got it. Okay, that's appendix one. And then appendix three I've combined. Can you see this? We're still on one. We're still on the map. Okay. And then, sorry, I don't know what you can see and you can't. <laughs> we can see All the right. report. That's so, maintenance frequency. Yep. So we've got maintenance frequency um, for synthetic and natural. So those would be appendix number three, which will turn to number two. But I can also take these and add them into the document. It's just depends on what you guys want. I think I think it's too clunky. They're too big and clunky to yeah. put in the document. Yeah, I think leave them in the appendices. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then I don't know if anyone wants to look at the references, but frankly, it's just a summation of the things we cited and some of the things that we used and didn't cite. But you know, my goal would be to share before it actually just, you know, share something if if our timing is good like on Thursday, but just so you all see it and the idea would be that it's a only if something glaringly wrong, you would point it out to us before publishing, but you know, you'd know, you get a look at sort of the whole compilation as it will be presented the following day. I'm just bear with me. I'm just scrolling through. There's like four or five pages of appendix of um, references. Yeah, but you get a sense of it. Yeah. And these are all coming right from the footnotes. So I've gone to the footnotes. I've made, I've made sure that all of these are all in there. The only problem is that I, I can't exactly link to everything. Oh, no, I can. Okay, it's linking. Never mind. Yeah, I mean, I, I was actually going to argue we shouldn't have links in the appendix. Yeah. Why not? Why not? It's easy. <laughs> you know, Natasha, uh, I think it's, it's probably more work than it's worth, but most reference sections I've seen are single space, but don't worry yep. about it. No, I can definitely fix that. That um, I'll definitely do that. I did it in a different document. Uh -huh. So I just basically copied and pasted it in. But once I get it into the word, I'll fix it. I'm, I'm going, unless someone objects, I'm going to assume that the, the motion that was made and voted on tonight to give us flexibility on, on, you know, administrative edits also applies to things like the appendix Please. and references. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So not to rush us along, but I would entertain a motion at this point. Motion to accept the report. Second. Any discussion? Marvin. Second. Okay. Any discussion? No. Um, okay. I'm going to go right over. Uh, call the roll. Jill? Yes. All right. Uh, Leslie? Yes. Okay. Jim? Yes. Marvin? Yes. Mike? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Jill Barr? No. Not here. All right. So that is six, one, two, three, four, five, six, six to zero. It passes. Woo! And I would just say one more time what a great job, Natasha, you've been doing with Absolutely. the report and with the minutes and all of that stuff. Thank you. Yep.
Thank you. Thank you. And this has been oh, an it's amazing. Not over yet. No, it not isn't. Even. Well, next, 72 hours, she'll she'll really earn her salary in the next 72 hours. Uh, Leslie, go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Leslie. Bye. Bye. Um, I would just want to thank all of you, including Leslie, who's I think still with Eating. us. On our way to get beat up about kids in playgrounds. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm in the office. Um, <laughs> I just want to say what a great job you've all done. Uh, this is the hardest working town committee I've ever been on, most dedicated and had the tightest timeline, but produced, I think, the best, the best work and the most extensive work um, of any committee, you know, per pound. I think we're pound per pound, you know, we're one of the best. Um, and so I want to thank all of you. We will send a letter to the town moderator and the chair of the select board on Friday if all goes well. If, if it doesn't, it may be delayed a few days, but I, our goal is still for Friday. And um, what I'll ask the town moderator is to distribute the report to the town meeting members, but have do it through him and then work with him to find a date and time to do a presentation on the report. And is this report also going to be on the town website? Yeah. 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 Hopefully it will be widely shared. Um I would also say that uh, although I don't know what night we will speak at town meeting, it may be one of the earlier nights. It will not be the first night. So town meeting was supposed to begin on the 22nd. It's the first night of Passover. So it's been postponed the start to the, uh, the night of the 24th. We will not be presenting on the 24th, but it's possible we may present um, as early as the second night, which is, I believe, May 1st. So I would love it if you could all be there. That may not be possible. But if you can, I will certainly let you know as soon as I find a date with the town manager, with the town moderator, I will I will share that date. And, you know, usually committee reports happen at the start. So in terms of time, we should plan on being there by eight o'clock because usually these reports happen, you know, between eight and eight fifteen. So. Um, but I want you all to be there because I'm going to recognize each and every one of you. Um, and you deserve it because you put a ton of work into this. Thank you, Jim. For all yeah. It's been a pleasure. All right. It's not over yet. I mean, it's weird. Natasha and I are like wanting to do a victory lap, but the next 72 hours are still going to be something. Jim, one final question. Um, just wondering, on Friday, when we, that is our anticipated date to send it over to the town moderator, would you also like me to release that on the website? I don't know what the protocol is, and I defer to you on that in terms of do you yep, release it on the website simultaneously we're giving it to the select board and the town moderator or do we kind of I'll wait clarify for the with town Mike moderator Mike. and select board to themselves release it? I, I don't know how these yeah do work. they have to accept it it's a good point all right I'll 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 work with Mike Cunningham on that yeah I trust I trust you to dot the I's and cross the T's with the appropriate folks all right and Thank someone you. I think maybe it was you Mike at one point said shouldn't this shouldn't this be shared with the high school building committee i'm, I'm not averse to that uh but uh i i don't have a plan to formally give it to them but i'm you know informally i can always send it to jeff thielman yeah i'm sure it'll get there one way or the other anyway yeah you know i don't think this is going to hide this report <laughs> i think it'll make its way to their inboxes by us or by someone else yeah well great work team I'll entertain another motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Maybe maybe for the last time. Maybe. <laughs> All right. We'll go right down the list. Was uh, there a second? Oh, yeah. yes. It was Mike motioned and Jill second. Um, okay. So Jill? Yes. Uh, Mike? Yes. Marvin? Yes. Natasha? Yes. Jim? Yes. Am I missing anyone? I think we did Joe, all the cases. That's yeah. one, two, three, four. Leslie. Yeah, but who's our Joe other? Joe not here. Joe. Leslie. Joe and Leslie. Joe and Leslie. Leslie. Leslie too. Right. Leslie's gone. Right. Okay. No, but there's seven voting members. Two are gone. Oh. Joe Who? Barr and Leslie. Oh. Right. <laughs> you guys are too funny. <laughs> <laughs> I assume the motion passed.
I, yeah. sure it's I just can't. I'm done. <laughs> and I have to say a final shout out to Susan Stamps, who was with us at the beginning, and she's with yeah. us at the end. So thank, thank you, Susan. You. And thank you for creating this committee. I think it's been quite worthwhile. I don't know, Susan, if I'm ready to say thanks yet, but <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you all. Have a great evening. Stay tuned. We'll talk soon. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.